Hello everyone. All right. So this is a first. Um, you, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa and I am the teacher here at Piano Video Lessons. I have a series of piano lessons that you can follow as videos for free here on YouTube. The most popular series that most people follow is the year one piano lessons series, which takes you sort of from beginner all the way up to late novice, early, late novice, I would say. And uh, it's a really good series to follow in your own time. You can teach yourself how to play piano. I also have other types of support for that. I have a virtual piano studio that you could join and uh, get some personal coaching from me. And also I have live classes, online classes that are starting. Actually, the next class is beginning uh, next Sunday, a week from today. So if you're looking for some something to do with your time during the these difficult times, I suggest learning to play piano. And so um, today is the first live stream that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do a series of these live streams because I do think that uh, at this time it's good to have an opportunity to really um, have something positive to think about, something to do at home, something that you can do on your own and uh, and you know continue to live your life and have lots of fun. So this is new for me. I'm, I haven't done live streams on YouTube before and I'm going to give it a try. So one thing that you'll notice is that uh, there's a little banner across the bottom is encouraging you to say hello in the chat. So the really cool thing about that is that I'm able to bring the uh, the comments from YouTube here into our live stream. So I'm going to say hi to Adam. Adam is one of my online students. I see him on the regular in our online classes. I also have a hello here from Jean-Pierre. I am seeing hello from Juan Meja, Mejia and someone whose name I won't even try to pronounce, um, Bandaru, and uh, some of you others. Let's see, we've got um, Carpenter, our Carpenter. Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. But if you do say hello in the chat, then I will be notified here on this side that you are, um, that you're here, which is awesome. So as I was saying, this is the first live stream in a series that I have planned. They'll be at the same time each day, and they're sort of geared at beginner piano players, and probably there's something that you can take from them if you're not a raw beginner. But today the theme is sight reading or reading music. So we're going to talk about what exactly, how exactly you do read music. We're going to get into the just the nuts and bolts of it. I'm going to give you like a raw introduction to how to read music, and then we'll go on to some other music reading techniques and ideas that could um, help people who have a little bit more experience with playing to get better at grabbing the music off the page and getting it onto the piano keys. So please do say hello in the chat if you're if you're tuning in and uh, if you have any questions please post them in the chat. We, um, as, as I said, we can bring those comments into the uh, into the into the live stream right here. So um, just you know, post your comments, and I can bring them on screen at any time. Um, I even have the ability to bring individual viewers onto the stream with me, so that we could have a conversation in real time. So if anybody really would like to do that or is brave, then that's something that we could do as well. Um, so this will be available for replay on YouTube. I'm sure it's probably easier and better to watch my actual pre-recorded videos if you're looking for the solid instruction because this one will be uh, a little bit interactive and a little bit instructional. I'll try to make a balance between the two. So I see we've got about 20 people tuned in which is awesome. I only just decided to do this yesterday when I got home from a vacation that got curtailed from all of this craziness and I thought you know what I'm not going to be laying on a beach. I should definitely do some more piano teaching and uh, give everybody something to do. Um, while they're while they're doing the same thing at home. So a few more people have made some comments. I see Melody saying that she's one of my fans. Thanks, I'm one of your fans too, Melody. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. And I've got uh, Bing Nguyen here saying hello and thanks. And I've got Grace Ma saying that uh, she should subscribed and loves my lessons. So that is awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so let's see if I can manage all of this at the same time and uh, and and get things going. So, reading music. 
Um, it's a hard thing for some people to do and it's easier for others, but we're going to get a little introduction today. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my camera around so you guys can see the view that you're used to seeing, which is this top down piano keys view. And uh, you're going to lose my face, but that's okay. I can still see your comments and you can still see my teaching. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to mention that I do have two uh, playlists on YouTube. One of them is called the Note Reading Crash Course and the other one is the Note Speller. So if you're just learning to read music, the Note Reading Crash Course is a great place to start. And if you are looking for uh, some enrichment at getting more note reading experience, then the Note Speller is a really awesome um, playlist as well. And these are the ebooks that go along with those. I will do a little bit of referencing of that during today's stream um, at some point. So let's just talk a little bit about reading music. So the piano has notes um, represented and played by each of these keys. And then as we play each note, you can see the sound goes higher and higher as I move up the staff. And these are the white keys. So we're going to focus our attention on these at first. And of course, we also have black keys. And these um, are usually indicated by a slightly different type of notation. So it's important for us to focus on the white keys before we try to learn the black keys. And um, when we read the notes, as we go up the piano, we go up the page. And as we go down the piano, we go down the page. So if the notes are moving higher, the sound is also moving higher. So that's the, the first thing that you can know. Um, so I'm just going to put a little uh, bingo chip on here to help with the demonstration. But if I was to put the chip here on the, so that it's directly across a line, it would represent a specific note on the piano. And then as I go um, above the line, it becomes the note above that. And if I move to the next line, it's the note above that. And so each of these spaces or places on the staff helps us to identify a specific key, a specific white key on the piano. So as we keep going up, the note keeps going higher. And so in this particular set of, on this ladder of lines, there are five lines. And then they sort of take us as far as this on the piano. And then as we go down the ladder, um, we would get all the way to the middle here. And this note needs its own special line because there is one space in here where there's no line. And th this is because it'd be really confusing if there was no gap. We just have this great big series of 11 lines, which is way too hard on the brain. So if I had one on this line here, this one that we call middle C, and it has its own little only tiny little line here. So this is middle C. And these notes are played with the right hand. And then as we continue going down, we continue the same process. The lower down the ladder we go, the lower down the white keys we go. And each line and each space represents a different key on the piano. And so we can memorize and learn all of these different lines and notes on the piano. And then we can also really just compare them to each other, which is helpful. So let me just grab another couple of um, bingo chips here. I've got them grab two of the same color. I've got two blue ones. I see a couple more hellos since I got started. I'm just gonna pop up here. I see a hello from uh, yeah, Isa, Esa. Mm, I'm bad at pronouncing names. Hello to you too. Nice to meet you. And I also have a request here from Bill uh, Bing Nguyen to please teach us basic chords. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about chords today, so that is something. Good, good question, and uh, we will definitely uh, introduce the idea of chords when, as it uh, pertains to reading music. But uh, maybe I'll make a maybe I'll make a note to include chords as a as a live stream topic, all to itself for another day. All right, so when we're reading notes on the staff, you can see that sometimes they are associated with each other. So we can see here that these three notes are all touching this line. There was one above the line, one on the line, and one below the line, but they're all touching the line. So those three notes are also all touching themselves, each other, here on the piano. So we have the highest blue one, the middle red one, and then the bottom blue one. So we have those three notes, which are all neighbors, and you can look and see that they look like neighbors. So if I was to have a note here on this line, 
and we have a note here on this line. And if we were to have another note here on this space, you can see that these no longer look like neighbors because they're not touching. They're, there's a distance between them. So we also have this distance between them on the piano. And I've landed these notes in specific places because these ones are what we call landmark notes. And they're really good ones to memorize. So let's talk a bit about landmark notes. And I'm going to grab another bingo chip. And I'm just going to place this one here on this line. And one more. I'm going to grab another blue one. And there's a reason behind my color choices here. We'll talk about that in a second. So um, before I get to these landmark notes, let me just back up a little bit. And I'm just going to reinforce one thing that I just told you, which was that when we move from one line to the one note to the next note, we always move from line to space and space to line. So here, for example, we have this set of notes that are moving up the staff, and they're moving space to line to space to line to space. And they're going like this, space to line to space to line to space. And these ones are on the top ladder. And this top ladder, this is called a staff, I'm going to stop calling it a ladder, but I, I call it a ladder with my young students because they understand the concept of climbing a ladder. So as we go up this staff, um, the notes go higher. The staff at the very beginning has this uh, clef mark. This is a treble clef. And the treble clef means um, that, the, that the lines on this staff represent the higher register. Then as we go down into this staff, if we have some notes down here, these notes are now moving from here. I've got a space to line to space to line to space. So space, line, space, line, space. These notes are moving down and these ones are below the gap. So they're in the lower register of the piano. And when I say gap, I mean this gap here. So we have the bottom half of the staff or the bottom staff, bottom of the grand staff. So we move from space to line to space to line to space. And that is now because we have this base staff, clef at the beginning of the staff. So this gives us just an overview of how all of the notes can pertain to each other here on, on the piano and on the lines. So that brings us to these notes here, which are the guide notes. So this middle one, we already talked a little bit about it. It's super easy to recognize because in order to create this note, it needs to have a ledger line. And ledger line just means small line. So if I made some extra ledger lines here, I could make some additional middle C's with just adding a few more of these little circles onto the piano, onto the staff board that I have here. I am trying to find blue ones, but I might not have enough. There's another one. Oh, my line's too short. It's important that the line is long enough. So there we have. Um, some middle C's. And this is an easy note to recognize. This is the first note that I teach to uh, my students because it's super easy to notice. I'm making my lines longer just because they need to peek out on the outside of these circles. So this note is middle C and anytime you see it you can recognize it. It's here. It's located below the treble staff and it's located above the bass staff and you can find it with this one ledger line and a note on it. So when you're trying to read music, uh, recognizing guide notes is great because now if I were to have this note, I can see that it's right beside middle C. So it's going to be touching that C line, but it's just below. So now I know it's the note B. And then here I can recognize this note is the note A. And if I remove the note B, I can see that this note is a skip away from middle C. So it's a line to a line. When we go from a line to a line, we're skipping over the space note and that's this piano key right here and we're skipping over the space note. I'm going to keep talking about space notes and line notes, but I'm just going to say bring a couple more comments on here. I have one from uh, Gautam Garg saying, I love your videos, ma'am. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And we've got a quick hi here from John Mitchell. Hi, John. Nice to see you today. Um, so when we move from, uh, from line to line, it means that we're moving now over uh, the space note, skipping it completely. So here I have a note that's in a space, which is now a neighbor of the last one I played. And if I have to always count from middle C, it starts to get a little bit cumbersome as I go further and further away. So for this reason, we use guide notes or landmark notes. And this bass clef is here to help us target a specific note. 
and it's the one that I've left behind here. I'll use a red one just because I was using red here. So this base clef, you see it has a big dot on the second line down. And as you come out here, you see there are these two um, little circles above and below the second line down. And as I move this note along the line, it hasn't it hasn't left. This is the bass clef, also called the F clef, and it helps us to target this note here, which is bass F. So I had middle C uh, as the one that we learned first, our first landmark note, and then we have the note bass F. And now we have two notes that can help us to target other notes. So if I were to place, oop, red, if I were to place this bass note here, you can see that there are only three notes in between these two. So I know the neighbor of C is a space, and I know the neighbor of F is a space, so I can have this one as a neighbor, and I can have this one as a neighbor, and then there's only one other note left, and that other note that's remaining is the note A. I'm just going to slide this right in here. It's that note that's on a line. That's a lot of notes in a cluster, but this note A here is the one that's in between these other two. I'm just going to slide these guys out of the way and slide that A right in the middle. So now you can see I have C and I have A and I have F. That's these three notes right here. Now someone was asking about chords and chords are always formed by using notes that are a skip away from each other. So I've just formed a chord here. It's a triad called the F major triad. Triads are named by the bottom note, but that's that's not what we're talking about today, but that's just interesting for the moment. So when you're learning to read music, comparing notes to your guide notes is a helpful way to um, understand the, the different notes. So I'm going to ask you to answer in the, in the chat what you think the answer to this question is. So uh, I've already shown you C and B and A and G, and we've said that this note is F. So F is along here. I want you to tell me what you think this note is. And so it's the space note that's below this line. So go ahead and type your answer in the chat to tell me what letter you think this blue note would be. And uh, it's going to take a second for me to get your answers because YouTube gives us a little bit of a delay. But go ahead and type your answer in, in the box. Meanwhile, I'm going to talk about this other set of lines and how we can find a guide note here in the top. So we have this fancy looking thing, it's called a treble clef, and the treble clef helps us target a specific note, and the specific note that it helps us target is the note G. So I still need more of these bingo chips. I don't like to leave them out because sometimes they fall and land between the piano keys, which is bad news. All right, so. Here I have the um, the middle circle here that's like this little bullseye inside, this treble clef, is helping us to identify the second line of the treble clef. So we have the second line down in the bass clef, and we have the second line up in the treble clef. This one helped us find the note bass F, and this one helps us find this note. And you might notice that this note is the same distance away from the middle C as the, um, as the, as the base F was. So we're going to talk about what that note is in just a second, but I see lots of answers have popped up here on my, um, on my answer. So we were looking to see what is the name of this note. And let's see who's right. I see lots. I have answers of E and G and E and A and E and E. So the majority of people think this blue note right here is the note E. So let's find out the answer. All right, so we start here on C, and then we would go down to the space note, which would take us to B. Then we can go down to this, this note right here. That takes us to A, and you can see I've got that one marked on the piano already. Then I can go down a space. And then I can go down again to a line, and that note we're already marked on, so we know that's F, don't we? And then we go down one more note, and the E's had it. Excellent. Okay, so you guys were right. That note is E. So uh, the people who guessed A and G, I think maybe you were thinking of counting only the lines. So you might have gone C, B, a. I mean, that is not correct. You need to make sure that the next note down is a space. So line to space to line to space to line to space. So this note here is E. All right. 
Now we're gonna go on. I was gonna ask you another question, okay? So I'm just gonna I'm gonna type right here. Um, new question, new question. All right, I think that typed it did. All right, so the new question is gonna come after my comment, and the new question is, what do you think this guide note is here up in the top? Because it's equidistant. It's the same distance away from middle C that base F was. So base F is in the base here and you can see that it's one, two, three, four, five notes down. And you can see that this note that I'm talking about right now, this one that came out of this treble clef and is rolling along the second line here, this note is the same distance up from middle C as F was down. So I wonder what note I'll find over here somewhere um, to match what this pitch is. So go ahead and type your answers after the word new and I see some answers are coming. Um, seeing the answer E and I see the answer G and I'm going to wait another second or two here because they tend to come in in a big bunch. I see another G. All right. I'm um, getting high here from Meredith Tisdale. Hi, Meredith. We're having a guessing game. What note do you think this is? Um, I've got another answer of G. All right. So the answer, dun, 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 drum roll please, is G. You are correct. The G's have it. So that note here is called treble G, and you can see it's located right up here. I'm just going to move some of this out of the way so we're not talking about those anymore. But now we have middle C, and we have bass F, and we have treble G. And these notes are all guide notes. So it's this one, this one, and this one. And the same applies as before with this bass. We only now have three notes in between here that we need to decipher. So if we were to see a note like this one, we could look at it and say that's a space note. It's very close to the G line. So it's very close to G. It's one space below G. So I know I can reason that that note is F because I'm comparing it to G. And then I could also look at this note and I could see that it's on a line. And I know the line notes are all skipped away from each other. So these three notes are line notes and it's not a C and it's not a G. So I can reason that this note is E. Um, so I'm just going to make one point here. I'm just going to flip my camera back around so that you can see my face because I've been teaching this here, looking at the piano keys for what feels like forever. Um, so. I don't think you're going to learn to read music during this live stream. Learning to read music is a skill, but it takes some time and you're going to get the basics today and then you can practice. So if you have never read music before and you do want to learn, and this is really overwhelming and too many things, um, you can check out this uh, note reading crash course, which will teach you how to read music sort of one note at a time. And I'm just going to do a little screen share here so you can see, uh, for example, what I'm talking about or I think I'm going to do a screen share. Okay, my, my Google, Google Chrome is not responding. I hope that I'm not freezing. This could happen. Uh, better not. All right, so let's see here. Note reading crash course. Going to share the screen. And there we go. We're sharing the screen. Hopefully my stream is still good and healthy. Not sure. Um, so this then is a, a screenshot of page from the note reading crash course. And you can see that lesson one focuses on just a single note. And it's the one we just learned. It's, it's focusing in on just the uh, treble G. It has some finger numbers up here. It also gives you a chance to try it yourself. You get to copy the exercise so that you can practice making that note so that you really get familiar with it. And uh, then we can move on to lesson two. Now each of these lessons, there's not a lot written in the book because really it's to go along with the video instruction that goes with this set, which is all the free videos on YouTube. So this comes from the free video series of Note Reading Crash Course. There are 15 lessons in there. Um, so that's that. Um, I'm going to remove that from the stream. There's me again. If you're already reading music and you're just looking to get better at it and you want a little workbook, um, then the the note speller workbook is a really good option because it is a bunch of pages that walk you through um, practicing to read the notes. So here, ooh, right. I, I usually have this one turned on. So you can see here that we can um, focus in just on the lines. There's a couple of the notes that we just learned. There's the treble G and there's the note below it that's E and you can see the C is marked and it's an actual workbook. So as you begin to practice your notes, you can check the, um, fill in all the answers and then at the very back of the book there's an answer key. So there's also a series of videos that goes with this. It's called a note speller for piano. 
So I don't think you're going to learn to read piano music during this live stream, but it's going to be a really great introduction for those of you that have never done it. And if you want to dig in, those are some resources you could use to get a little bit more practice. Okay, back to the staff. Here we go. All right, so we were talking about treble G, and we were talking about helping ourselves read the notes based on whether they're a skip or a neighbor. And if you look down here now, you see that we have these three notes. We have treble C, we have bass F, and we have treble G. I might have said treble G. This is middle C, bass F, and treble G. Now, I have more blue notes up here, and they are also guide notes. Let's see if we can figure out what they are. So, no, another guessing game, okay? New question, I'm gonna type the word new in here. Crossing over, new. New question. The new question is, what note do you think these, this blue one is up here? So, the last note that we had was this line note G, which is right here on the piano. And now we have to go up, up, up until we get to this blue circle, which is in a space. So going up the piano, lines and spaces alternating, line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. What do you think this blue note is? You can type your answer in the chat. But um, one of the things that you might notice before we get the answer is if you know the answer to this one, and as we saw that these two red ones are equidistant from middle C, you probably also notice that these two blue ones are also equidistant from middle C. So here they are outside, and this one is the same distance away from here. And that was, So if you know the answer to the note that's three spaces up, you also know the answer to the letter name for the note that is three spaces down. Now obviously they live in different places on the piano, but they are named to the same thing. All right, so I see some answers coming through. I see Jean-Pierre has an answer. And um, so far, no more guesses, but I'm going to just give it a second because, like I said, there's some lag going on here that I may not uh, have all of my guessers answered yet. So, don't want to spoil whether or not Jean-Pierre is right or not. Um, all right, so we have um, five guide notes. All right, so I'm getting ready to place another one on here, and I, and I, I hope at least one more person throws a guess in there, but I'm just going to take this other blue one off of here and clean some of my uh, erasable marker off. Put that on here. Um, and so I do see another guess, but I'm also going to bring up Jean-Pierre's comment. He says, um, I play the saxophone. I read the G clef only, so which one of your books will you recommend for me to purchase, please? So um, if you're looking to read only the G clef because you only play the saxophone, I don't have a book that focuses only on that, but you could learn to read the F clef as well as the G clef if you purchase the note speller for piano because you have experience reading already, so the note speller and the, the, the companion videos for that um, book would be what you probably want to follow because you have experience. I would not recommend the note reading crash course if you um, if you already have note reading experience. The note speller is uh, the note speller workbook is a better option for that one. Good question. Thank you. Um, all right, so I do have three people answered and everybody's right. Give yourselves a gold star. The answer is C. So let's prove it right. So we have this note G, and then if we go up one, we get to a space. That takes us to A. Then if we go up another space, we get to B, or up to the line, we get to B. And if we go up one more space, we end up on C. So I'm going to place these blue ones on the C's. Now, that's why I made them blue. I think you might remember earlier in this little stream, I mentioned that there was a reason for the colors. And the reason was that I wanted you to notice that these C's are mirror images of each other. And they help you to remember the C's because the treble clef or the G clef helps you remember the note G and the bass clef or the F clef helps you remember the note F but these um, up three and down three notes they are the mirror C's and um, so th they're found here on the piano up three and down three and so that's a lot of things okay so basically when we read music we go higher up the ladder as we move higher up 
the pitch sounds and higher up the piano and as we go down the ladder we go lower the rule is that the notes move from line to space to line to space to line to space to line to space and if you know these guide notes it's easy to see the comparison of these notes in between so let's play another guessing game um, I'm gonna put out two notes because this will give you two things to think about I'm gonna put two notes out here and I want you to tell me blue and red what the answers are so you I first of all want you to name this uh, blue note right here and I also want you to name this red note right here so blue and red you can tell me your answers for what those pitches are so what is the name of this blue note and what is the name of this red note and we'll come back to that in a minute after you've answered some answers um, and I'll just keep talking so the whole idea is if you memorize these five notes it really gives you the ability to extrapolate so many more notes up and down the piano just by comparing the note as you're doing in this little exercise you're going to compare this note to one that you already know lives on the staff and you're going to compare this note also to one that you already know that lives on the staff so by comparing them either as um, moving by neighbor from a line to a space or as moving by a skip by going either space to space. Where will I show that? I'm going to grab a different color here. All right, so uh, Vinaya, Vinaya has a guess. They've guessed an answer for blue and an answer for red. And John has an answer. And I see some more answers are rolling in. And I'm just going to, I think I have some green chips in here. I do. All right, so if I go from a space to a space, that is skipping the line. And if I go from a line to a line, that is skipping the space. So we'll do that down here. So these, these four green notes are demonstrating how um, you could be skipping over one piano key even though the notes are so close together. So space to space or line to line skips over one piano key. All right, so I've got some answers coming through here. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back and just see what everyone's saying. Um, I'm seeing blue is B and red is E. I'm seeing red is E. I'm seeing G and E, so that would be maybe G and E. I've got Adam with B and E, and I've got blue is B. All right, red is E. Okay, so most of you got the right answer. So we have a blue note down here. This one is B and we have a red note up here. This one is E. Now I'll just quickly explain that in case you got it wrong and you want to know why. So this one here, um, if I was to just isolate it, I'm going to take it on this side, if I was to isolate that and not have anything beside it, I'd go, well, it's very close to space 3, and I know that that space 3 is a C note. So if space 3 is C, and this note is touching it, but below on the line, I know it's a neighbor. So I know that this note here is B, because it's one note below C. And also, if I look at this one here, I can say, well, it's high, and it's very close to the third space, which I know is C, and I know it's going from a space to a space, so that's a skip, it's not a neighbor, so it's not D, it's a skip, and that lands me up here on the note E. So, anyone who said B and E, you are right. But I think what I'm demonstrating here, hopefully effectively, is that if you know these five notes really, really readily, then you can extrapolate any new pitches that you come across. And you can go, that's great, Lisa, but I don't want to have to name every single note by comparing it to another. And I think you're right. You should learn them individually. Hence why you should practice your notes. Maybe yeah, do a note speller or get some kind of app. Um, if you need more instruction on those, then definitely my video series will help you. If you don't need more instruction, then just write a bunch of notes down and then name them and play them and double check yourself. Um, or join my virtual piano studio and we can learn to work on that together. But um, let's talk about when we see a bunch of notes, okay? So I've got these little green guys here, and we just discovered this one was B. So if I have B here, and then I have a little melody that goes like this. So these are just a bunch of green notes that make a melody. And I'm going to remove these extra guys for now. I can see that this note, the melody starts on a note that's below the note that I know, and then it goes up, moving by 
line to space to line to space to line. So when I play this, I don't have to read all the notes. I just have to know what this blue one is. And then I have to just follow the direction and the distance for each pitch. So if I was to start here on B, and then I would play uh, from line, space, line, space, line. I didn't have to pay attention to any letter names. Line, space, line, space, line. I just walked myself up the notes, knowing that they move in that way. Now, if this note was missing, I would know that it was starting on B, and then it was going line, line, space, line. So I'm using my knowledge of the distances between notes, and I'm playing them relative to the starting note. So I had started off with this note being a neighbor of C, so I had to extrapolate that as B, but then I'm just going to skip neighbor, neighbor, moving up. So let's do another one. Let's, woo, you can play these along. If you're, ha if you're playing at home, if your piano is nearby, then I recommend you do that. So I'm going to start on this note now, and I'm going to have this little set of notes that follow. So you might notice right away that this starts off on the second space. So here we have the note that's in the, the well, it's the second space, but it's the third space down. So it's our guide note C. So this little, this little tune that I've made here now starts and finishes on the same pitch. So I know it's going to start and finish on my guide note C. And then I'm just going to play uh, space, space, space. So it's going to go space, space, space. Now you notice I skipped. I'm playing with funny fingers here so you can see that I've skipped over the notes in between. So playing through, it goes like this. Space, up a space, up a space, down a space, down a space. I'll do that again. Now I could name those notes too, and I will. There's C, E, G, E, C. So I'm reading each of these notes according to the distance away from the first note. All right, so I'm just going to switch my camera back around here for a second to take a little breather, maybe have a drink of water, see what, how everybody's doing. How's everybody doing? Does anyone have any questions for me so far or any observations? Or you can go ahead and give me a, a quick comment and then I'm going to pull up another resource and do another thing. We've been doing this for now for 37, almost 38 minutes. This is, this is something. <laughs> One second. My throat is getting dry. Uh, so I'm just going to pull up something that's over here on the side and go from there. So again, there's some lag, so maybe some of you have posted questions, but I have not seen them yet. I will see them soon. So I have this set of flashcards that I use. They're giant flashcards with melodies on them, and we're just going to do a few little examples of reading the starting pitches and then figuring out the notes um, that we need to play from there. And doing, a, you could play these at your piano if you're definitely if you're at your piano, this would be an excellent time to um, to jump in with that. Now, I'm also feeling a little brave, and I think that maybe some of you. Um, might like to come on live and chat with me in real time. So I'm going to just I'm gonna be brave. I'm going to post a link here in the chat. And if you want to, woo, checking, paste, there we go. If you want to actually come on the stream, and everybody will see that you're here, and you would like to have a little chat with me, or uh, demonstrate your natural skill, or guess some notes that I show you, then uh, we could do that. I've posted the link in the chat. And we'll see if anybody is super brave and pops into my stream here and uh, wants to wants to have a little bit of some interaction. So a uh, little comment here from uh, Vinayak. I think that's the pronunciation, and I'm apologizing if it's not. Um, excellent tutorial. You're an amazing teacher. Thanks a ton. Thank you very much for your kind words. I do appreciate that. Um, another question. We have uh, Iasa asking, what's the easiest way of memorizing where your notes are as a beginner? Okay, so as a beginner, you should start with these five notes. Just these five. They're the landmark notes. And then after that, you should start to pay attention to, like, maybe memorize all of the line notes for the treble clef. So we already know G is the second line, and we know that 
if we know the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then we know the, the notes that are below G. So a skip below that would be E, and you can just work on treble staff line notes for a bit. Um, that is one of the things that are referenced here in the Note Speller Workbook. So if you're using the Note Speller Workbook, you can focus just on um, the line notes or the space notes. Let me just show you, I do, I can share my screen on that as well. Um, let's see, we'll find a share screen and we'll pull up the Note Speller, uh, this one. So the Note Speller, you can see here, um, the first lesson focuses on the lines of the treble staff and you can see that uh, there's some chance to practice drawing them and then practice naming them and there is an answer key. You can practice writing them. So all of the different things. And then when it moves over to spaces. So again, you can start to see that these notes skip on the on the piano and they also skip in the spaces. So really focusing on how notes relate to each other is super important if you're a beginner. I would say that uh, memorizing notes um, as a group as opposed to individual notes is better than trying to memorize them um, one by one by one. Um, so that's 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 one of my suggestions would be to uh, to work on just grouping the notes and, and trying to find the connections there. All right, so uh, I'm going to continue on. I don't see any takers on my um, on my offer to come and join me live in the stream, but that's fine. Uh, we'll continue to play this little game of uh, you play along at home. Um, so. Uh, and John is asking for recommendation, but he didn't quite finish typing, so I will wait and see what the rest of the question is. So let's have a look here at uh, some of these flashcards. And I'm going to flip my camera back around. I'm going to just check the time before I do that. Uh, 42 minutes. So we're probably going to go 15 or 20 minutes at the most more. I think an hour is plenty of time. Uh, here we go, flipping around. So you can see I've got this pile here of very large flashcards. And so we could play these notes. Now there's no there's no staff written at the beginning because these can be for anything, but let's assume that it's in the treble clef. So maybe I'll draw one at the beginning here. It's going to be really squishy, but I'll draw a treble clef here. So now we can figure out the first note. It repeats and then the next note is a skip away. So this note I recognize, it's middle C. Well, I recognize them both, but if I was a beginner, perhaps I wouldn't. So then I can see that my, my starting note is a skip above because they're line to line, so I skip the space. Line to line, skip the space. So I have two line notes and then down to a C. So there we go, two lines, down to C. Now if this was the bass clef, it would be completely different. It would be down here because the bass clef has lower pitches. All right, let me grab another one. Here we go. So it's going to be treble clef again. Draw a really squishy treble clef here at the beginning. So, ooh, this first note is a guide note. I'm sure you recognize this guide note as being G. So here we have G, skip to a line, repeat that one, and then skip to another line, which we recognize as a guide note, middle C. So we have line, skip, line, repeat, line, skip, line. So it goes G, E, E, C. Moving down like that. All right, let me grab another one. Okay, let's grab this one. These ones are a little smaller. And they're whole notes, but, you know, I'm not going to count to four for each of these. But let's go ahead and make a treble clef. And again, this is going to start on a guide note. It's starting on the third space note, which we know is treble C. So it's going to go space, skip to space, skip to space, neighbor, line. So we're going up a skip, up a skip, down a neighbor. So it's going to go C, skip, skip, neighbor. And so what note do you think we're going to finish on? I'm going to ask you for the answer in the chat. What do you think this note is? The very last note. It's going to go C, skip, up, skip, up, and finish. So I'm going to answer John's question. Here we go. Uh, John is asking, what do you recommend for finger placement? This is an interesting question. Every piece of music has different finger placement. 
So the finger placement is according to the piece of music that you're playing. So for example, if we were to look at the note reading crash course, uh, I'm going to add that screen share, um, Chrome tab crash course. Here we go. Um, if we were to look at this first exercise for the note treble G, uh, you can see that there are finger numbers across the top here and it's got four finger twos, four finger threes, four finger fours, and then it says four, three, two, one. So when you're playing this, you have to change finger numbers as you go. So let me just remove that and demonstrate for you. So as I demonstrate this for you, I'm going to remove the comments so you can see my hands. Um, what's happening is it said four finger twos on G, so it's one, two, three, four, and then four finger threes on G, and then four finger fours on G, and then the last one was four, three, two, one. So I only played one piano key, but I moved my hand and played it in all different places. Now how you touch the keys is also important. You need to do it with a relaxed finger, um, not a straight stiff finger, and uh, it has to feel comfortable. So curved fingers are important, and that's something that we also touch on during the year one beginner piano um, class uh, video, the, the pre-recorded videos and also in our live classes. So um, you can you can get a better sense of hand placement on that. Now that is one thing that I find is much more beneficial in an, in an actual live interactive class. So I do teach beginner online piano classes where you can start at the beginning and you watch the recorded videos but we interact in between and I coach you, I watch you practice, you show me what you're doing, I help you improve, I catch your mistakes, I catch the things that will become bad habits and then you get my coaching in real time. I'll actually teach similar to this live stream where you'll get interaction with me. And I also have a, if you don't want to actually start at the beginning and work with this, I have a virtual piano studio that I just got started where we're going to be having similar, you post some videos of yourself practicing and I can help you with all of those little things that might give you some trouble. And now we have some answers. All right, I have only correct answers. Meredith and John have guessed F, and you are correct. It starts off here on the third space C. So we have C, skip to E, skip to G, down neighbor F. So it was C, E, G, F. And you could hold those for four beats each, but it's one of those things. Um, Adam says, how long would you recommend each day to work on note reading? So I think it's different for each person, but definitely if you're still working on note recognition, you should do it every day. And I would say it depends on how long your like your focus is. So work on it to, for a length of time that's comfortable for you and you feel like you've made improvement. So I would recommend zoning your practice in, focusing maybe just on the treble clef and then just on the bass clef um, or just on the, the guide notes. Now I'm going to show you if I can find my iPad, which was here before I started. Where did it go? Um, looking. Oh, great. I do have it. Um, there's an app that I recommend and use with all of my piano students in my live studio. And I'm just going to flip back around and show you this little app. It's called Note Rush. And um, it's super awesome. So here's the, here's the screen of it, Note Rush. And what it looks like, um, it's this yellowy orange Note Rush. So if you um, want to practice playing notes on your piano, you get Note Rush, and then you can set your level card and choose just the starter or um, part staff, whole staff, just ledgers. You could practice just treble clef. You could try to practice just bass clef. Um, you can even design your own level where you set up notes. So I had this with a student earlier. You can see we were doing some guide notes, middle C, treble G, treble C, and a couple of higher guide notes that we didn't get on today. Um, but um, let's see, back, back, where do I go? Hmm, I have to look at it. So level, okay, so um, so let's say we wanted to practice just between middle C and the, the guide notes F and G. We just choose starter level and then we're going to play. Okay, so we'll click here and now the next thing we have to do is press the start button and when we press the start button it's going to prompt me to play a note on the piano. So it says play middle C. Now it's going to listen. 
while I play each of these notes. And then it tells us how we did. Um, ask me later, but I think it's an excellent app. So each level has more notes. So that was level one. Level two is from um, this whole entire range that we just did. It's called part staff, but it goes from bass C up to treble C. Now, if you want to, you can change the theme. So right now they have a St. Patrick's Day theme. So I'm going to go ahead and play the notes on my piano when these little um, that's a, these are hats, sham, um, leprechaun hats. There's a shamrock. Now you could say these letters out loud as you play them. F, C, B, C, F, A, E, G, guide note. Oh, didn't hear me. Ooh, D. Now, if let's say I make a mistake. It gives me a penalty of five seconds and it makes me try again. C, and that's the end. So you can keep track of your high score. You can do all kinds of great things with this. So there's there's the th St. Patrick's Day theme. There's this like garden theme. It's great for kids. There's space. There's no uh, soccer, and then there's just plain old notes. But again, you can um, adjust this to whatever amount you need to practice, and also design your own level to add notes in that you wanted to practice playing. Uh, so these are the black keys, so there's flats and sharps. We didn't really touch on that today. Nobody even asked. Um, flats and sharps. So sometimes a note has a flat in front of it, like this one. So that looks like our guide note G, and it has a flat in front of it. That means go to the black key, which is to the left. Like if you have a flat tire, you're going to go down, your car is going to go down. So if I'm looking at this G, and it's flat, I'm going to play the black key here that's below. Okay, now I could also have that same note as a sharp. So now we have uh, G sharp as well as G flat. And if something is sharp, if you sit on a sharp tack, you probably want to stand up. So if you see a sharp, you're going to go up to a black key that's touching that one. So here we have G, and we're going to go sharp up. So that would take us to this black key. All right, that's just a quick primer on sharps and flats. And we're approaching the one hour mark, and I think that's probably enough information for one day. Um, but again, um, you know, my main purpose behind doing this, uh, this live stream today is just to get you thinking about spending your time playing piano when you obviously must have some downtime coming up with the way the world is going right now. Lots of people are staying home. So if you're doing anything like me, you're trying to find things that are productive to do. So I'll be doing a series of live streams. Uh, today it was note reading, and tomorrow it's going to be technical skills. So we'll be doing some finger drills and exercises and things to get you thinking about actively playing. Um, uh, yeah, good, good, good finger technique and how to play. And there, are, if you look at the playlist, um, you can go to my my web my not my website but my um, YouTube page, and you can see there's a playlist there of all the live streams that are coming up um, in the next five days. And so. Yeah, the main reason that I wanted to do this was to just give you something new to think about. Maybe you can go practice your notes now. Um, if you need extra help, you can um, you can use the note writing crash course to get started learning, or you could use the note speller for piano and uh, practice your notes, or get this note rush app, note rush, to practice your notes, getting faster at playing them. Um, Nicole, Nicola, Lee, I don't know if all kinds of letters there. I'm going to say Nicola. <laughs> Nicola says many thanks for your tutorial. You're very welcome, Nicola. Um, so if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them for you as we continue to wrap this up. But um, if you're new to piano, I do I do recommend that you um, see if you have can find yourself a spot in the year one series. There's six units in year one, and they um, they definitely um, progress in a nice way that adults can follow without being overwhelmed as you learn. And if you're looking for um, more live classes with me, you can find out, you can go to my website and find out about my online class that starts on Sunday, or join my online studio um, and uh, get some real-time instruction at whatever level you're working. The class that starts on Sunday is a beginner class and it starts at lesson one, right at the beginning, helping you to learn to read while playing. 
and uh, Snowbox Nassers <laughs> says, thank you, see you tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, Meredith is saying thank you, you're very welcome. And uh, Helios, thank you, lovely teacher. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. All right, so I'm going to have to go like drink a cup of tea and put my feet up for a minute because somehow, oh, sorry, somehow I'm very warm after teaching you guys for this last 54 minutes. I think it's getting warm and sunny in my room. Um, so it was great to see you all uh, in the chat and I'm looking forward to tomorrow where we're going to talk about piano technique and I hope to see you then. Awesome. Bye-bye.